my experience now is character and values and uh, peace of mind. That's what makes life worth living for me. All those material things and fame and fortune and all that stuff, I used to think or achieving anything, getting recognition, all that stuff. And that was what I thought that I wanted. And that's what I thought everyone wanted and was the best thing. But now I find reality is the, the inward things are the best. Hey, go up and say, you gonna end up, if you don't be careful, you're gonna end up with a backpack and walking down the street with the shelter people. And that's exactly what happened. I had a, a good childhood for the first 10 years of my life and then I discovered my dad was an alcoholic at 11 years old and from then on it was very tough uh, and the family was, tended to be dysfunctional and codependent and all that stuff on top of my mental health issues and later on my substance abuse issues. Yeah, my, my childhood was great. Um, I grew up all the way through school. I graduated from high school. Yeah, uh, I started going to college, and then um, I just had a kind of a psychotic break, which led me to become homeless. You know, really discovered something. Man, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Um, I had a terrible childhood, terrible. And um, one thing I learned from my dad was, you better be doing eight hours of doing something a day if you're gonna have shit. So I left that. My parents couldn't raise me in Compton, L.A. I had to raise myself. You know what I'm saying? Dad was always gone working his ass off because he had to take care of four kids and one his, and me and his daughter. Uh, well, I used alcohol and crack and marijuana, marijuana and alcohol, and I, I, I know. Uh, and A and A would classify that as being an addict. My addiction was straight up alcohol from probably nine years old to, to, to now. I can't drink ever in my life again. Drinking's gotta be out, or I'm gonna die. Drinking overpowered the cocaine and rock cocaine, you know, I got into. See, that would make my high go down from drinking. So I didn't really mess with it. I like getting drunk, you know what I'm saying? Fall down drunk, blackouts. Well, I've been clean except for nine months. Four was in jail. But yeah, um, it's, I got here, man. I mean, I didn't know who I was. I mean, the girls and everybody at home, all of them loved me. My three girls loved me. My daughter, her mom, and my ex lady and her daughter. They wanted me to go. Go find yourself, man. Uh, there is a certain kind of freedom about it because uh, you're at the bottom as you can go, so uh, there's no... It's almost like you don't have to follow any rules. <laughs> Spiritual... Uh, sensation from being homeless like they kind of have an attachment to the, to the lifestyle of um, just being individual and not really having like a strict guideline the type of homeless that we see are two types they're your uh, typical black and white considered homelessness where they live in a car, they live in a park, they live in a train station, they live at churches, they live in abandoned buildings, some of them even live in hospitals. The other type of homelessness that I see are the ones that are transition. There, it's a hybrid between literally living on the streets and couch surfing at someone's house. I've met people that just they get laid off and they're homeless and they're perfectly Functional people. I've met people that were just plain dysfunctional, couldn't carry a sentence, but they're living on the streets somehow and getting 
food and stuff. You know, when you think of homeless, you think of the people that live underneath the, the freeway, or you live um, like on a park bench, or they live at a bus stop. That's not really it. That's just some homeless, and I would consider those extreme because they they haven't had a time. They haven't had time to take a shower in a week or maybe longer. Um, there's no food. They're literally they're eating what they what they get every day leftovers from people leaving dining rooms or uh, restaurants and you have those families that are just above that that have clean clothes and they go to the laundromat they wash themselves and they look presentable and those are the ones that you would literally just see at a supermarket you wouldn't even think that they're homeless or they're living out of a van That's a great question because the economic recession has had a tremendous impact in the school district's homeless population by far that is without a doubt there's data to prove that um, because of the crisis a lot of families have lost their homes because of foreclosures and um, a lot of evictions have happened as well too um, and the reason is is that when you have a recession and granted some of these families uh, the parents of the homeless kids in our district, they work in construction, they could do blue collar work, some of them work in white collar work, but for the most part, they, they work in construction. Because of the housing, housing crisis, they don't build homes anymore, they're not remodeling homes anymore. So guess what? You don't have a contract anymore, you're not a plumber anymore, you're not an electrician anymore, you're not, late, you're not a painter anymore, and so what it means is that you don't have jobs, when you don't have jobs, you don't have the money to sustain a family in the city of San Francisco. And San Francisco is a very expensive town to um, maintain a household. Um, and that has a direct effect on our homeless population. We've increased our population toll easily 10% since last year. And I'm not just throwing the numbers out there. I can give One thing that's changed is a lot of the people who are on the streets are more educated and really want jobs, but they just can't get them. I think that a big thing that hinders us advancing um, in helping the homeless population is the fact that everyone kind of has less now. So like even we're seeing a huge decrease in charitable donations, um, places that typically are able to give money to help people get on their feet to begin with are just not having the funding. Time. Just giving your time. Um, find a place that you believe in that's really doing the good that you want to see in the world and give your time. I mean, of course, places need money and donations and things like that, but not everyone has that to give. So if you don't have that, you really can give your time. And you would be surprised, even if you feel like there's not a whole lot to do if you come volunteer, you'd be surprised how much it just like means to the clients to have people around that care about them, that are volunteering and giving their time. When I'm thinking of how to help the homeless, a lot of people will kind of see the people like off to the sides of the streets, panhandling and things like that. And actually, especially in this area, there are a lot of places that those people could get services. So if they're actually panhandling for food and things like that, they're probably not because they can just go get it easier somewhere else. So taking the money that you would normally give to those people and contributing to an organization that really can make the best use of it because we can feed and um, have a client our clients get their fees are eight dollars a day and it's because of things like donations and stuff that supplement that that we're able to feed them three meals a day provide shelter provide basic necessities toiletries help them with clothing um, help them find jobs help them find housing all those things on like eight dollars a day so it's people who are just doing their best but hit hard times and need that little extra boost to be able to do that but i think that Completely eradicating it, probably not, but I do think that we certainly have the ability to um, get the numbers of homeless people way down. What I want the world to know is that it could happen to anybody. Uh, and it's not, um, it's not a disease.